Hello Rocket fans and welcome back to the Copenhagen Suborbital's Rocket Shop where we continue working on the world's only crude, crowdfunded space rocket, Speaker. In our last Speaker Propellant Tank progress update, we gave you a brief overview of developing all the welding skills and equipment needed to make these 3mm thick high pressure tanks in-house. But most importantly, we pressure tested them up to 30 bar, reaching a safety factor of 1.5 and qualifying them for flight. But before we could put these ethanol and liquid oxygen tanks to rest and concentrate our efforts towards the next big section of the speaker rocket, its BPM-100 rocket engine and test stand, there were a few final steps we needed to make. First off, we needed to hide all the dings, scratches and heat affected weld areas by painting the tanks white. Since Spica is designed to be reusable and we launch our rockets from the middle of the Baltic Sea, this also has a beneficial side effect of making the rocket visibly stand out in the green sea once it splashes down under its parachutes. We do of course use GPS trackers to track the position of our rockets and we have accurate models for predicting their splashdown location derived from the rocket's apogee parachute drag coefficients and near real-time wind speed and direction calculations. But finding things in open sea even when you know their rough location can be difficult. And unlike our space capsules, the Spica booster won't have any autonomous flotation devices to keep it afloat for a long time, which means we need to be as quick as possible in finding it, securing it, and having our divers attach inflatables to keep the booster above water for its 40 km trip back to port. We won't have enough space on board our ships to pull the Spica booster out of the water, so we will likely drag it to shore behind our mission control ship, similarly like they used to do with the refurbishable space shuttle solid rocket boosters. So funnily enough, this thin layer of white paint increases our chances of getting our rocket core from space back to our workshop and hopefully on the launch platform many more times again. Furthermore, with this being the very first rocket to come through our upgraded production line, we had to do some fine tuning. Each of the propellant tanks connect with the intertank section via 6 heavy duty bolts here and are further supported by 36 smaller bolts throughout the mating flange that dampen vibrations during the flight. Long story short, those small 36 holes needed a bit of realignment for everything to line up as expected. Now the mating flanges on the propellant tanks are made of thick 304L stainless steel, so we were definitely happy to have this kindly donated CNC mill at our disposal to bite through the thick, unforgiving, quickly hardworking stainless steel. And coincidentally, these are the same adjectives that can be used to describe Jorgen's biceps, after riveting nearly 150 pop nuts through that stainless steel. Lastly, we obviously wanted to test how everything fits together and see how the tanks look stacked on top of one another. Now, you might remember us using our rocket chop ceiling in the past to hoist rockets for testing and calibrating their thrust vector control in GNC hardware, but those rockets have been significantly smaller than Spica, so we had to upgrade our chain hoist for higher loads. But once that was done, we could finally and safely start putting the pieces together. Perhaps you're asking, Copsub, didn't you make a horizontal bed for the booster so it could be easily stacked and worked on horizontally? Well, yes, yes we did, and that's how we intend to work on the speaker rocket for the most part, but once it comes launch or test day, we won't have a crane tall enough to just place the whole 12-15 meter tall speaker rocket onto the launch rail, and we will need to stack it section by section on the launch platform. So simply put, this was an early rehearsal of doing just that, but it also acted as a nice morale boost for the team and hopefully you, the supporters, to see the rocket come together vertically and appreciate its modest grandeur for a moment. 
As for the future, now that the speaker propellant tanks are finally pressure tested, painted and can fit together, we will concentrate our efforts towards building the first BPM-100 engine and its test stand, which essentially is another rocket in itself, albeit a very aerodynamically challenged one. So if you have enjoyed following the development of the speaker rocket so far and would like to help us out, we would really appreciate your support at www.copsup.com. Even as little as a coffee a month makes a big difference to our project since we all do this for free in our spare time. And we have just received two and a half tons of steel for the BPM-100 rocket engine test stand and actually have started this construction. If you wish to support that, your help would be even more appreciated considering the recent astronomical jump in steel prices. But that is all for now, so as always, thank you for watching and supporting, and if you don't want to miss any of our future updates, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so we can see you next time when we get one step closer to space. The reason we're getting so close to reaching space on our speaker rocket is because all of our crowdfunding supporters. If you enjoy watching these insider videos on building a space program and you would like to become an even bigger part of it, you can help us out by going over to our website www.copsum.com and becoming a supporter with a small monthly or one-time donation. We all do this for free in our spare time, so you'd be surprised how much every little bit helps. And thank you if you feel like what we do and share is interesting.